Okay, we are streaming and recording. Uh, Troy, I believe you have to start it. Okay. Find my mouse here. All right, we have opened up the room. If we could just take a second and let people connect. Derek, do me a favor and anyone of our admin, please um, promote the panelists. Okay. I think you need to make me a co-host. I can't uh, promote anybody. All right, I'll just get, I'll get them then. There we go. Get moving here. Mr. Delacre, the floor is yours. Dr. Susanobi, did you give me the go ahead? Yes, sir. The floor is all yours. Say again, please. Uh, the floor is all yours, sir. Okay. Thank you. And welcome to the August uh, regular board meeting for Northwestern Lehigh School District. At this time, will you please uh, join me with opening exercises? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mrs. Partinio, please call the roll. John Cassiano. Present. <clears throat> Willard Deliker. Here. Joseph Batzinger. Todd Hernandez. Here. Todd Leiser. Here. Marcy Pazinski. Here. Ellen Rex. Here. Rachel Scheffler. Here. And James Warfel. Here. Thank you. And uh, at this time, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda that is before us. So moved, Mrs. Scheffler. Motion second by, Rex. Motion by Mrs. Scheffler, second by Mr. Rex. Any comments or questions? Hearing on all those in favor, aye. Aye. <clears throat> all those, no. Aye. We have an agenda. Welcome again and uh, to everybody who is in attendance. At this time, we offer courtesy of the floor. If anyone would like to address the board, please. Uh, Raise your hand so Dr. Sosnovi can uh, cue you in and uh, begin with stating your name and address, and then uh, you can uh, comment to the board. Are there any people waiting in the queue, Dr. Sosnovi? Uh, I see one. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Sosnovi, Amber is a, an employee that is going okay. to be, needs to be moved over for new staff orientation. Yeah, I'm, staff. Just, I'm not going to move her over. I'm just going to unmute her mic at that point in time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I do see another. Uh, so. Mrs. Baker, I gave you the mic. Oh, hi. It's Michelle Baker. I have two boys in school, Ryan and Kieran Baker, uh, 10th and 7th grade. I just wanted to say I'm very disappointed that we're not going five days a week. I appreciate the response from Mrs. Holman about the why, um, but I I don't know if other parents feel the same way. I'm, I'm personally disappointed that the boys aren't in school five days a week. I think the risks uh, or the benefits outweigh the risks. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Baker. Um, you're not alone in your feelings. There is one more individual. Uh, Mr. Uh, Garimple, you're 
you have the mic. All right, my name is Todd Dalrymple, um, 7248 Lincoln Court, New Tripoli. Um, I have two daughters at Northwestern. Um, my oldest is be going to seventh grade, and my youngest is going to be entering kindergarten. I'm also very disappointed that you guys aren't going to go five days a week. I mean, I, I spoke to the, I believe it was assistant superintendent, pushed the blame over to Gary Day's office. I spoke to Gary Day. He said it's either up to the school board or directed me to the governor's office. Governors, they said it's back to the school board. What they issued was only a recommendation. I just don't understand how you expect a kindergartner to be virtual for three days a week. Me and my wife, we work. We have stuff to do when we come home. I mean, uh, it, it's this is, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. Very disappointing Northwestern. I mean, someone needs to stand up and, and and just say enough is enough. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dalrymple. And um, I know there are a lot of people who agree with your feelings. We will be uh, discussing this later in the agenda under our reopening health and safety plan this evening. There are no other hands, Mr. Delacroix. Okay. Did you say no other hands? There are no other hands, sir. Okay. Then we'll move on. Thank you for uh, coming, uh, Mrs. Baker, Mr. Dalrymple, and uh, we will proceed with the agenda. Uh, minutes before you from previous meetings are up for approval, and I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Motion, Rex. Second, Pizin. Motion by Mr. Rex, second by Mrs. Pazinski. Are there, are there any comments or questions about the minutes? Hearing on all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carried. And at this point in our meeting, we have uh, 10 retirements that we would like to uh, recognize this evening. And uh, I will uh, ask Mrs. Holman if she would uh, lead us through the uh, recognition this evening of our employees. Thank you, Mr. Delacour. Actually, Mrs. Matika will start that for us. Thank you, Mrs. Holman. Uh, yes, tonight we have 10 retirement resolutions that will be read into the record. Uh, some of these employees will be, uh, will be accepting their retirement resolutions later in the personnel action. But out of the 10 employees, we have six with us tonight. And we'll start with Mr. Allen's retirement resolution. And I'll ask Mrs. Yadish to present the resolution. And I, if we could let Don Allen into the Zoom. I've unmuted his microphone if he wishes to speak. Thank you, Mrs. Matika. This resolution is presented to Donald Allen in grateful recognition of nine years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Allen has completed nine years of distinguished black and gold service as high school assistant principal at Northwestern Lehigh School District. And whereas Mr. Allen supported the academic, emotional and social needs of each of his students. And whereas Mr. Allen went above and beyond to meet the needs of all students by teaching them how to be successful both in school and in their personal lives. And whereas Mr. Allen worked tirelessly to ensure the security of the high school and the safety of all of our students. And whereas Mr. Allen understood the meaning of school community and personally supported and celebrated each faculty and staff member of Northwestern Lehigh High School. And whereas Mr. Allen leaves as an administrator knowing that he provided compassion, support, safety, professionalism, kindness, and tiger pride. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of School Directors of the Northwestern Lehigh School District tenders Don Allen the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for his commitment and dedication on behalf of our schools and the Northwestern Lehigh family, and be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting, August 19th, 2020. Don, are you there? Yeah, I just want to say thank you. It's been... Uh... It's been an honor and a privilege to work with such fine people, administrators, faculty, staff, and amazing students in, in the community. Uh, it's, 
It's been a privilege. Thank you. We'll miss you, John. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, retirement resolution is Dorothy Brobst, and I'll ask Mrs. Burlett to read it and present it into the record. Thank you, Mrs. Matika. This resolution is presented to Dorothy Brobst in grateful recognition of 16 years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mrs. Brobst has completed more than 16 years of distinguished black and gold service as an instructional assistant at the Northwestern Lehigh School District. And whereas Mrs. Brobst understood the needs of the library, as well as the individual needs of each student and supported the students to ensure a love of reading for each student. And whereas Mrs. Brobst created a positive, supportive and safe learning environment that fostered the academic, social, emotional and behavioral growth of each student. And whereas Mrs. Brobst routinely collaborated with her colleagues to meet the needs of each student, and whereas Mrs. Brobst saw the potential in all students and worked tirelessly to support their growth and development and to help them achieve their goals. And whereas Mrs. Brobst understood the meeting of school community and Tiger Pride and supported the staff at Northwestern Lee High School District. And whereas Mrs. Brobst leaves the educational profession knowing that she provided advocacy, compassion, support, professionalism, kindness, and tiger pride. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of School Directors of the Northwestern Lehigh School District tenders Dorothy Brobst the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for her commitment and dedication on behalf of our schools and the Northwestern family. And be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting. Dorothy, are you there? I do not see her, Mrs. Matika. Okay. Um, we will see that she gets the resolution. Mrs. Burlett, will you also read Jenny Novotnik's resolution? Sure. This resolution is presented to Joni Novotnik in grateful recognition of 16 years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mrs. Novotnik has completed more than 16 years of distinguished black and gold service as an instructional assistant at the Northwestern Lehigh School District. And whereas Mrs. Novotnik recognized the needs of each of her students and personalized their learning environment to ensure their academic success. And whereas Mrs. Novotnik recognized the needs of each of her, sorry. And whereas Mrs. Novotnik routinely went above and beyond to support the teachers with whom she worked and to meet the needs of all students. And whereas Mrs. Novotnik saw the potential in all students and worked tirelessly to support their growth and development and to help them achieve their goals. And whereas Mrs. Novotnik understood the meaning of school community and tiger pride and supported the staff at Northwestern Lehigh School District. And whereas Mrs. Novotnik leaves educational profession, knowing that she provided advocacy, compassion, support, professionalism, kindness, and tiger pride. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of School Directors of the Northwestern Lehigh School District tenders Joni Novotnik the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for her commitment and dedication on behalf of our schools and the Northwestern family. And be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting. Thank you. Joni, are you there? I do not see her, Mrs. Matika. Okay. We'll see that she gets a resolution also. Next is Sandy Horvath, and I'll ask Mr. DeVico to read her resolution into the record. Thank you, Mrs. Matika. This resolution is presented to Sandra Horvath in grateful recognition of 24 years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mrs. Horvath has completed 24 years of distinguished black and gold service as a building secretary at Northwestern Lehigh Middle School. And whereas Mrs. Horvath recognized the needs of the students and staff and provided the necessary support to help them. And whereas Mrs. Horvath created a friendly, helpful, positive, and safe atmosphere for all who entered the office. 
And whereas Mrs. Horvath was the heart of the office and established the trust and respect of students, parents, and staff members. And whereas Mrs. Horvath was thoughtful in her approach, steadfast in her service, and always kept the best interests of Northwestern Lehigh Middle School in mind when fulfilling her responsibilities. And whereas Mrs. Horvath understood the meaning of school community and was instrumental in planning and organizing school events and attended many of them. And whereas Mrs. Horvath leaves the educational profession knowing that she provided compassion, support, professionalism, kindness, and tiger pride. Therefore, it be resolved that the Board of School Directors of the Northwestern Lee High School District tenders Sandy Horvath a sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for her commitment and dedication on behalf of our schools and the Northwestern family. And be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting, August 19th, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeVico. I understand Sandy is not on the Zoom either, uh, but again, we'll see that she'll get the resolution. Um, Mr. Snesbevic, will you read Deborah Snyder's? She's a food service worker. Yeah, absolutely. This resolu resolution is presented to Deborah Snyder in grateful recognition of 20 years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mrs. Snyder has completed more than 20 years of distinguished black and gold service as a food service worker at Northwestern Lehigh School District. And whereas Mrs. Snyder understood the needs of the students and provided great customer service and kindness to all. And whereas Mrs. Snyder provided exceptional dedication to her profession and was greatly respected by her fellow staff members. And whereas Mrs. Snyder routinely went above and beyond to support coworkers and staff with whom she worked. And whereas Mrs. Snyder approached each day in an enthusiastic and supportive manner that helped to create a safe working environment and positive atmosphere for students. Whereas Mrs. Snyder understood the meaning of school community and Tiger Pride and supported each student and staff member at Northwestern Lehigh School District. And whereas Mrs. Snyder leads the food service profession knowing that she provided compassion, support, professionalism, and kindness. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of School Directors of the Northwestern Lehigh School District tenders Deborah Snyder the sincere thanks and appreciation of the Board for her commitment and dedication on behalf of our students and the Northwestern family. And be it resolved further that this resolution be made per a permanent part of the record of this public meeting. Thank you. Uh, the next five employees are all uh, employees under arts direction. I did expect Randy and Richard to be on the Zoom. I was just informed they are not, but I will ask Art to read all five resolutions into the record. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Batik. And I assure you it's not because of my management. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start first with- Mr. Mr. Roach, before, before you yes. continue, can I interrupt? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, this is, we have 10 resignations that we're recognizing and thanking tonight. And uh, I think we just passed 98 years of service with the ones that have been uh, mentioned up to this point. So, uh, you know, just to put that in perspective as we move forward with the uh, rest of the people here tonight, this is uh, an awesome uh, list of people who are with us this evening retiring and who have given uh, many, many years, over 100, uh, to the service of this school. So thank you for that, Mr. Oaks, please continue. Sure, thank you. Um, I'm gonna first start with Randy Holzer. Um, this is presented in grateful recognition of 13 years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Holzer has completed more than 13 years distinguished black and gold service as a full-time custodian at Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Holzer recognized the needs of the district and it assisted our students. And whereas Mr. Holzer created a clean, positive and supportive environment for student achievement. Whereas Mr. Holzer routinely assisted the support staff with whom he worked. Whereas Mr. Holzer worked setting up and tearing down for student and school events to help keep the district buildings clean and orderly. Where Mr. Holzer understood the meaning of school community, supported employees and students of Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Holzer leaves his profession knowing that he provided support, cleanliness and tiger pride. Therefore be it resolved that the board of school directors of Northwestern Lehigh School District 
Tenders Randy Holzer the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for his commitment and dedication on behalf of our school and the Northwestern family. Be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of the public school board meeting. Thank you, Art. You with Reed Richards? Sure. <clears throat> This is presented to Richard Freiling in grateful recognition of 17 years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Freiling has completed 17 years of distinguished black and gold service as full-time custodian at Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Freiling recognized the needs of the district and assisted our students. Whereas Mr. Freiling created a clean, positive and supportive environment for student achievement. Whereas Mr. Freiling routinely assisted the support staff with whom he worked Whereas Mr. Freiling works setting up and tearing down for student and school and to help to keep the district buildings clean and orderly. Whereas Mr. Freiling understood the meaning of school community, supported employees of this and the students of Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Freiling leaves his profession knowing that he provided support, cleanliness, and tiger pride. Therefore, be it resolved further that the school board of directors of Northwestern Lehigh School District Tenders Richard Freiling the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for his commitment. Mr. Freiling understood the meaning, dedication, and on behalf of our schools and the Northwestern family. Be it resolved further that his resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting. Thank you, Art. And John Hovalowski. Okay. Presented to John Halazowski in grateful recognition of 15 years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Mr. Hal Halazowski has completed 15 years of distinguished black and gold service as a bus driver at Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Halazowski understood the needs of each of his students and transported them safely to school and home each day. Whereas Mr. Halazowski provided exceptional dedication to his profession and was respected by his fellow staff members. Whereas Mr. Halazowski routinely went above and beyond to ensure the safety of all students during the fair and inclement weather. Whereas Mr. Halazowski always helps students learn and understand the importance of safety when riding a school bus. Whereas Mr. Halazowski understood the meaning of school community and supported students, parents, and staff at Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mr. Halazowski leaves a transportation, leaves as a transportation employee knowing he provided compassion, support, safety, professionalism, kindness, and tiger pride. Therefore, be it resolved that the School Board of Directors of Northwestern Lehigh School District tenders John Halazowski the sincere thanks and appreciation for the board of his commitment and dedication on behalf of our schools of the Northwestern family. Be it resolved further that his, this resolution be made permanent part of the record of this public meeting. Thank you, and Louise is next. Okay. Keep on going here. <laughs> Louise Talazowski in grateful recognition of 16 years of service to the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas M Ms. Halazowski has created 16 years of distinguished black and gold service as a transportation assistant at Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Ms. Ms. Halazowski understood the needs of each of her students, assisted them safely to school and home each day. Whereas Ms. Halazowski provided exceptional dedication to her profession and was greatly respected by fellow staff members. Whereas Ms. Halazowski routinely went above and beyond to ensure the safety of all students who are in fair and inclement weather. Whereas Ms. Halazowski always helps students learn and understand the importance of safety when riding a school bus. Whereas Ms. Halazowski understood the meaning of school community, supported students, parents, and staff at Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Ms. Halazowski leaves a transportation employee knowing that she provided compassion, support, safety, professionalism, kindness, and tiger pride. Therefore, be it resolved that the School Board of Directors of Northwestern Lehigh School District tenders Louise Halazowski the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for her commitment and dedication on behalf of our schools and Northwestern family. Be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting. Thank you. And last and not least is uh, Bonnie. You're welcome. Okay. Presented to Bonnie Yo Yoakim um, for 22 years of service for the Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Ms. Yoakim has completed 21, 22 years of distinguished black and gold service as a bus driver at Northwestern Lehigh School District. 
whereas Mrs. Mrs. Joachim understood the names of each of her students, transported them safely to school and home each day, whereas Mrs. Joachim provided exceptional dedication to her profession and was greatly respected by her fellow staff members. Whereas Mrs. Joachim routinely went above and beyond to ensure the safety of all students during fair and inclement weather. Whereas Mrs. Joachim always helped students learn and understand the importance of safety when riding in a school bus. Whereas Mrs. Joachim understood the meaning of school community and supported students, parents, and staff at Northwestern Lehigh School District. Whereas Mrs. Joachim leaves as a transportation employee knowing that she provided compassion, support, safety, professionalism, kindness, and tiger pride. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of School Directors of Northwestern Lehigh School District tenders Bonnie Joachim the sincere thanks and appreciation of the board for her commitment and dedication on behalf of our schools and the Northwestern family and be it resolved further that this resolution be made a permanent part of the record of this public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Oaks. Mr. Deliker, I have 181 years of service. Is that what you have? Yes, ma'am. I uh, converted that into school days. Now some of these employees are part-time and some of them are full-time, but it's, that's 32,580 school days. <laughs> that's something to be proud of. It's an amazing list of uh, people who have helped us uh, in our struggle to uh, educate our kids and, and do it safely. I appreciate the school board recognizing their years of service and their commitment to our students. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Delacour, I believe Joni is on the line here if we want to allow her to speak. Sure. Please. Joni. Hello. Yeah, hi, hi, Joni. Hi. The floor is yours. Um, well, I, I just wanted to thank everyone for the opportunity to work in the school district. Um, it has been a wonderful, I think, 17 years. Um, and it's just so fitting that it is uh, the same school that I started at in first grade. We did not have kindergarten when I went to Weisenberg. Um, and it's the same school that uh, my kids went to, all three of my daughters graduated from Northwestern Lehigh. Um, so it is just, it's just been a wonderful end to my teaching career. I started out in Allentown School District, um, ended up in Texas, Florida, back to Allentown, and then to Northwestern. So I loved every minute of it. Um, the staff became my extended family, uh, the kids and the parents were just uh, delightful to work with. Um, so I'm really, really sad to be going. I didn't want to go so soon, but I just felt like it was the best time. Joni, we're going to miss you. Best wishes to you. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, for calling in and uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, uh, on behalf of the whole board and, uh, and the district, uh, best, best wishes for you and your retirement. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll, I'll be keeping a close watch on the school and hopefully uh, popping in to volunteer and uh, help out when I can. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mrs. Holman, I think that uh, that ends the uh, recognitions of all the people that we wanted to honor this evening. Is that correct? That is correct. If I could just say a few words, um, you know, Mrs. Matika said 181 years. We're always really proud when you look at each of every one of our retirees, when we have this opportunity to recognize them at a public school board meeting. Um, it's just um, bittersweet you know certainly uh, they uh, we wish them the best of luck with whatever it is that they do after they leave us but they leave a hole and a um you know sore spot here in terms of they will be greatly missed um 181 years of service across um all of the retirees you recognize this evening um is certainly very impressive and so we wish them all very well from from all of us to all of you 
Thank you. Mr. Delacre, you're muted. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of the board, best wishes in, in your all your retirements. And uh, thank you for the service that you have given to our children and the uh, families in our district. Now we'll move on to the uh, Next item on the agenda, which is the board president's report. And I hadn't on this evening, we'll discuss uh, my thoughts later under uh, the health and safety plan update. And uh, I would ask uh, Mrs. Holman if she has a superintendent's report this evening. I do, however, some of mine will also be covered during the health and safety plan because certainly our um, involvement the last several weeks has been about the health and safety plan and our return to school. I just will give you a few um, pieces of information that won't be covered during the health and safety plan, generally about our planning and things that have evolved over the last few weeks. Um, you know, we spent the majority of our summer as our entire admin team on the, on the call tonight planning for a traditional five-day model and had that full intent until last Monday. We'll talk a little bit about the recommendations that came earlier um, this week, last week in the meeting later this week. Um, for a county that doesn't have a county-wide health department, certainly um, as Lehigh County does not. Um, the, some of the advice that you'll hear about later comes from the Department of Health and, and they make recommendations about communicable diseases as the public health authority. And so we, I just wanted everyone to know, certainly, um, I know there are lots of questions about the, the switches and the late information. You'll, you'll see some of the dates of the information that we've gotten. We're also very disappointed in terms of the, the timeliness of the information that we've received because we had done most of our planning and and a health and safety plan we approved as of July 22nd, um, but we use all available data to be able to make the very best decisions for our students and our staff. Um, this is still an in-person model that does preserve some in-person for all of our students, recognizing that it is also a hardship on our families knowing that there are three days per week that they will be at home learning synchronistically. You know in your last board, one of your last board meetings you also approved information for us to be able to stream simultaneously from the classrooms that our hope is that we will be able to have students keep up with their general education classrooms, even if they are not physically present with us in the building. Um, many of our neighboring districts have switched um, and have probably for many weeks now either switched to hybrid, which is what we are currently in or even to remote to start the school year. There are many, many things that go into the, into the decisions that we make in terms of opening school and we don't take them lightly. Um, they involve things like staffing and, and appropriately staffing our buildings. Um, our av availability of personal protective gear, schedules, busing, social distancing, inform enforcing a face mask order, which you will hear a little bit more about later as another change um, as of late. Making sure we're making sound educational practices and recommendations that are based on sound educational practices and considering the social and emotional wellness of our students and our staff. Um, we understand as we are disappointed that students and families um, as well as our teachers and administrators are disappointed in the change. Um, we think it's the best pass forward at this time as we are responsible to consider all 2000 students of ours and 400 staff of ours when making the decisions. So as we move forward, we will continue to give the board updates at our board meetings as we open school and we look at data um, our spread internal outbreaks that we might have and educational options and continue to make the best recommendations and decisions that we can for all of our students and all of our staff. And so you'll hear a little bit more about that and we'll certainly elaborate when Dr. Sosnovic goes over some of the updates on the health and safety plan a little bit later this evening. I don't have anything further. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Holman. And uh, Mrs. Matika, can we go back to you to uh, take us through the personnel action for this evening? Luann, you're muted. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Deliker. Um, there is six full pages of personnel action this evening. It is a busy time of year for our administrators uh, filling positions. Um, so I will walk you through the, the beginning. We've covered some of the retirements, the retirement of John Allen, Louise Halosowski, and Joni Novotnik. 
that is 38 years of service. That was in the total of 181 years. However, I would like to call your attention also to the retirement of Pamela Tonke, a special education teacher at the high school, uh, retiring after 31 years of service to the Northwestern Lee High School District. And if we add that to the 181, we're now at 212 years of service. Amazing. Um, you'll see the resolution for Mrs. Tonke in the future. Items highlighted in yellow have been added to the agenda since last Friday. I would like to call your attention to page two under the appointment of two new employees that are on the Zoom with us tonight. The first is Amber Serenko. She's a long-term sub uh, at Weisenberg in the learning support classroom. And I'll ask Mrs. Burlett to introduce her and if we could let Amber into the Zoom. Thank you, Mrs. Matika. I'm proud and excited to introduce Amber Krasenko. She is a graduate of Bloomsburg University. She actually worked with us towards the end of last year. She filled in um, for a kindergarten position as well as a learning support position. And she's coming back to us this year as a long-term sub in our learning support. So we are very excited to have Amber back. Amber, do you have a few words to say? Uh, yes, can you guys hear me? Yes. All right, so my, I'm Amber Schrenko. Um, I'm very excited to stay within the Northwestern Lehigh School District as learning support. Um, I'm very excited to get to know some of the new children um, that are coming in um, and just help them in their learning process and set some new learning goals with them. Um, even with the circumstances we have right now, um, getting to know them and making them feel comfortable in the learning environment that we have at Northwestern Lehigh. Um, very excited. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Welcome, Amber. Thank you. The second employee with us this evening is Jessica Marquardt. She is joining us as a long-term, excuse me, a short-term sub as a reading specialist at Northwestern Elementary. And I'll ask Mrs. Pulley to introduce her. Thank you, Mrs. Matika. Jessica Marquardt is coming to us with over 12 years of elementary experience. She has taught in various states and she even has some experience teaching cyber school. Last several, the last several years, <clears throat> she has worked more specifically in the area of reading and in supporting students in that area. She's joining Northwestern Elementary as a reading specialist for the first marking period. We are very excited to have her on board. Jessica, are you there? Yes, I am. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm very excited about working in the position um, and in the district, so. Thank very you. Good. Welcome, welcome aboard. Continuing with the personnel action, I will call your attention to page three and on to page four is a long list of our substitutes. This coincides with our revise, revise, revision to our policy on appointing substitutes on an annual basis. So you will see all of the substitutes appointed in April, excuse me, in, in August, and we will add the substitutes as we hire them, whether that's October, September, April, May, so I will only add the new hires throughout the school year, but annually you'll see this list in, in August. And I will ask for your approval on the personnel action this evening. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Matika. And uh, yeah, that is quite an extensive list of substitutes. Or is this uh, unusually more than what we've had in previous years? Uh, it, we have a large list. I don't get too excited. They don't work uh, all the time. They are truly per diem employees. They work when they're available. The total <clears throat> right now is 116. Wow. Uh, that number does fluctuate throughout the school year, especially because we share our subs with a number of school districts. Mm -hmm. So if someone does get a short-term sub or a long-term sub position at another school district, they put themselves on hold. And then when they're available again, they do inform us. So the numbers do fluctuate, but we do keep them on our list at all times. So they do not need to update their, their clearances other than what's required by law. Okay, thank you. Okay, you've seen the uh, personnel recommendations for this evening. At this time, I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, 
approve the uh, personnel action. So moved, Pazinski. Motion by Mrs. Pazinski. Second, Cassiano. Second by Mr. Cassiano. Are there any comments or questions from the board on personnel? Hearing none, Mrs. Partinio, would you please call the roll? Don Cassiano? Yes. Willard Delacar? Yes. Todd Hernandez? Yes. Todd Leiser? Yes. Marcy Pazinski? Yes. Alan Rex? Aye. Rachel Scheffler? Yes. James Warfel? Yes. Thank you. And uh, now that it's official, welcome aboard, Ms. Serenko and Ms. Uh, Marquardt. And uh, best wishes to you and your uh, career here at Northwestern Lehigh. Thank you, Mr. Delacroix. Thank you, Mrs. Matika. Moving on to uh, curriculum and building issues. And I think what we'll do uh, this evening is we'll hear all of the items under curriculum and building issues. Uh, the first three are some changes that have come to us recently. The last three items are items that we vetted in our workshop. So we'll take them all as a consent agenda after they're presented. So Mr. Uh, or Dr. Sosnovic, would you please uh, begin with uh, reopening health and safety plan update? Absolutely. And Mrs. Holman, would you like to say anything for, prior to me beginning? Nope, thank you for offering though. I think you uh, have the floor. All right, awesome. Tonight I plan to review the recent orders and guidance issued by the De Pennsylvania Department of Education and Department of Health that resulted in changes to our reopening health and safety plan. We felt it important to present an overview of them so that parents and guardians can best be prepared for potential closures during the year. As a reminder, the reopening health and safety plan represents the instructional models and procedures the district will implement for the fall of 2020. When I mentioned during the July 22nd presentation that the science, public health conditions, and guidance surrounding COVID-19 are continuously evolving, I now believe that was an understatement. Highlighted in yellow are guidance issued since the approval of our plan less than four weeks ago. August 6, recommendations that K pre-K-12 schools sports be postponed until at least January 1st, 2021. On August 10th, determining instructional models during COVID-19 pandemic. On August 13th, recommendations for pre-K-12 schools following identification of cases of COVID-19. And then most recently this Monday, August 19th, 2020, updated face covering guidance came out. I'll be addressing the last three since they have impact to our school reopening this fall. On August 10th, the Department of Health and PDE issued recommendations to schools to use when making decisions related to the instructional models. Essentially, the guidance relies on two standard public health metrics, incident rate and the percent positivity of diagnostic testing reported, and this is important, by county. The guidance also provided clear definitions for the three instructional models. For in person, for the full in person model, schools are open each day with in person instruction for all students. Blended, some know it as hybrid learning model, is any model in which the number of students in a school building is reduced to allow for social distancing of six feet. And then our the full remote learning model is any model which all students engage in all learning remotely. In order for a district to determine what instructional models are available to them, the state launched an early warning monitoring dashboard that calculates the rolling seven day incident and PCR percent positivity rate. This dashboard is updated each Friday afternoon. As you could see last Friday, Lehigh County incidence rate is 34.8 and the PCR percent positivity rate is four. 
They also provide another view that compares it to the previous seven day calculation. So last Friday, we were at 28.3, we're now at 38.4. Last Friday, we were 31 or 3.1% with this past Friday being at 4%. Finally, they also provide an Excel tracker that allows you to see the level of community transmission and what count the county is in uh, week by week. So as you can see, Lehigh County has been in moderate for the last three weeks. It's important to note that this guidance couples Northwestern Lehigh School District with Lehigh County data. And the decision is an or decision and not an and decision. For example, you only need to meet one of the two criteria, in this case, incident rate, to be considered moderate. As a result of this guidance, we communicated to families on August 11th that the instructional models available would be blended and full online for the start of school. A second piece of guidance was issued by the Department of Health and PDE later that same week on August 13th. That provided direction for schools to follow an event a positive case occurs in a school. When a case of COVID-19 is identified in a school setting, the administration will work with the Department of Health to determine quarantine recommendations up to and including closing the entire school building if necessary. For when for when an entire school is recommended to close, the length of closure time will vary by community trans the level of community transmission and the number of cases. What this means per the state provided table is that because Lehigh County is considered moderate, they may recommend us to close five to seven days when we have two the four students slash staff test positive, or as much as 14 days if we have five or more positive incidents in the school. They say the length of the closure will allow us to clean the building, but honestly, they emphasize more that it gives the Department of Health time to complete the contact tracing. Inside the language, they introduced a new term to the public called cases. This was known to us, but not language used beyond internal DOH documents and trainings we've been a part of. A case is a person who has been identified with, a, with the virus that causes COVID-19. They go on to reinforce that it is the Department of Health who will determine close contacts and is responsible for communicating to those individuals, not the district. However, they may solicit the assistance of the district to aid in their overall communication efforts. One interesting change, uh, which they embedded in a video that could be easily overlooked by the general public, is the quarantine requirement of household contact. Examples of household contacts are parents, children, and caregivers. What's important about this is that if you're deemed a household contact, you will need to quarantine up to 24 days, not the 10 or the 14 days, which we've all come to know. So let me give you a scenario. Say a, pot, a father of ours tests positive for COVID-19 and one of our students, his daughter is living with him. The DOH would issue that father an isolation letter stating that he must isolate for 10 days. Once his isolation is up, the daughter's 14 day quarantine begins because the DOH says there was a potential risk of the father infecting the daughter during a 10 day isolation period. That's where they get the total of 24 days. The reason why this is important is that there's a high potential for the DOH to recommend that the entire school shut down with little to no notice for an extended period of time. That potential reside, the potential resides that Mrs. Holman may have to call families the night before like a snow day and say school is closed, but we're not gonna be able to give them 
the time period for which it will reopen because the Department of Health will have to determine that based on their contact tracing efforts. In response to this latest guidance, the district will require all educational staff and students to bring their devices home uh, to school and home each day. We are also recommending families to have a plan in place for childcare in the event that a closure occurs. It's also critically important that employees and parents and guardians follow the respective continuum of screening, as well as tell contact tracers if you are contacted by the Department of Health that one, if you're an employee, you work for the Northwestern Lehigh School District, or two, your child goes to the Northwestern Lehigh School District and tell them what building to aid in their contact tracing efforts. Finally, this past Monday, the Department of Health and Education issued, now hear me clearly, a requirement, not a recommendation, that students wear face coverings at all times while in school, even when six feet of social distance can be achieved. There are limited expect or exceptions. They base this upon an update released by the American Academy of Pediatrics late last week. They go on to define limited exceptions when, a student, when students are permitted to take off their face covering they are eating and drinking when spaced at six feet apart. When wearing a face covering creates an unsafe condition in which to operate equipment or execute a task, think of like your LCTI kids. And finally, at least six feet apart during face covering breaks, and they put a time constraint that lasts no longer than 10 minutes. This resulted in a change whereby we were going to permit teachers the ability to allow students to take off their face covering if everyone in the class was at their desk, stationary, and at six feet, which would have been the majority of our classes now that we are in a hybrid model. This is no longer a possibility, and we are only allowed to permit face covering breaks as I described. Our intention is still to have principals work with teachers to determine when we could offer face covering breaks during the day. Finally, level appropriate consequences for failure to follow face covering requirements have been made in each school's student code of conduct, which families acknowledge at the start of school through their student handbook. So in summary, our mantra has not changed. We firmly believe that we are all in this together and together we will get through this. Our commitment to communication to families are strong and we believe the continued collaboration and communication with families is still key to success in whatever instructional model we are in. We are strongly encouraging families to have a plan in place for childcare coverage in event of closures. And please, as I mentioned before, we're asking everyone to follow the continuum screening. And if you're contacted by the Department of Health, inform them that your child goes to Northwestern and or if you're an employee that you work here. That concludes my summary. Uh, Mrs. Holman, uh, the floor is yours. Um, we have spent the last week since we got the recent advice um, last Monday. Our admin team planned on Tuesday to um, make the switch. Um, the majority of their week, both in class schedules, balancing classes, rostering buses um, has been trying to switch to the hybrid model. We do believe that we will have a communication ready to go to families tomorrow um, and anticipate opening the portal for at least student schedules and homeroom teachers on Friday. Um, bus assignments will be done by early next week. Um, we're working through it as and the switch as quickly as we can, but three very significant updates, I would say, um, in the last three weeks that have kind of thrown some of the previous plans and the previous information we provided to families in terms of assurances about face coverings, et cetera, um, have been in some ways removed from our decision-making authority. And so um, we still believe that the hybrid is the best model to be operating in currently right now. We certainly were, were hopeful that we would be able to do traditional um, 
I believe that we should take the Department of Health's advice in terms of um, their understanding of the virus as well as their understanding of the community spread. And um, I do believe that once we get back to school, we'll have some data to base it on in terms of our own experience with our own teachers and students. And we will have some experience that um, we can bring back to the board on a monthly basis and potentially make a different decision um, moving forward. We will certainly take any questions. I'm sure there will be many because this is all new information and new advice. Um, and we've been working through it the past week or so. We hope to have that um, out to parents, as I said, tomorrow. Well, let's open it up to board members. Uh, are there any comments or questions about what you just heard? Once again, after all our plans that we made and approved have been changed, um, I'd like to hear your thoughts this evening. Couple, couple thoughts on my side. Um, appreciated the feedback from the community early on in the in this uh, in this meeting. I think it was Mr. Uh, uh, Dalrymple that pointed out, and he was uh, mentioning specifically the board decision to uh, make this change. I just want to make it clear the board did not make this decision. Um, we didn't vote on this. This was a, a decision that that. Uh, did, you know, could not go to a board vote at the time it, it came came to light. So that's one point I want to make. Um, <clears throat> the second point is just in you know my opinion, uh, looking at the data, um, I wouldn't have changed my decision uh, to uh, you know to stay with the, the traditional model. Um, there's there's really no data um, that I see in the Pennsylvania data or the Lehigh County data that indicates any change in trajectory. In fact, most of the significant trends are, are in, in a good direction. Um, that would have changed my decision from when we made the original, um, when we were having earlier discussions in you know June, July. Um, so to, to make a last minute change here based on the governor's guidance, um, you know, there, there was no change that I would have made um, based on the data I'm looking at. Thank you, Todd. Any, anyone else? My question's directed to uh, Jess. Uh, I was just curious on uh, if we would continue on with the full day, uh, the full week. Uh, what kind of liability does that open up to the district if perhaps uh, somebody would get sick, whether it would be a student or a, a faculty member? Sure. Good evening, everyone. And um, Mr. Cassiano, I understand your concerns. Just as this is uncharted territory for the education world, it is also uncharted territory for the legal world also. I understand everybody's um, concern that this is guidance and it's not mandated with the exception of what Dr. Sosnovic said with regard to this mask that came out this week. But I, I think we have seen it enough uptick of lawsuits. Um, and I think that if the board were to waver from the guidance and um, or require traditional in-person learning that you are welcoming lawsuits. Um, you are welcoming plaintiffs' attorneys to um, put forth many theories, and one of them being there was guidance issued by the Department of Health and the Pennsylvania Department of Education, and the board and the administration and the school district decided to ignore that guidance and to go forward. Um, there's possibility of liability on the federal level there could be a due process claim under the 14th Amendment that there was a state created danger by veering from the guidance. Um, also, there could be state cases. We all know that there is the Political Subdivisions Torts Act. However, there's exceptions to those, to the immunity under the act. And it is so much of a concern about these lawsuits that several groups here in Pennsylvania including the Pennsylvania School Boards Association and the Pennsylvania Association of School Administration was first lobbying for bills and legislation to be passed to insulate school districts. Um, right now, the House is not in session. There's no traction. So what you will see, and I'm sure you received emails where they are asking the governor to enter um, an executive order to insulate school districts from these types of lawsuits that could possibly come as a result of um, COVID cases from staff um, or children. So I think that there is enough of a concern 
Um, I do not believe that there is enough hard or fast laws that I can say to you that you are not going to have any type of liability. Um, and we have seen enough lawsuits in the past who has named everybody and their brother. So potentially it could be the school board, the administration's person, the administrators personally, as well as the school district. Um, I, I think I understand where, where the board would like to be in the traditional in-person setting. And, and I think the better way to insulate yourselves um, from liability would be to take it in steps and reassess as Mrs. Holman has said. Um, and if you get so far and there's no issues, you're in a better position illegally to support the position of um, a traditional schooling. Thank you, thank you, um, Attorney Moyer. Um, talking about taking steps, I guess we uh, we were told or recommended, and I'm not sure what the orders are if they're recommendations or mandates at this point. It's very unclear from the guidance that we've gotten from the governor, the PDE, or the Department of Health, whether it's a requirement or a recommendation. But uh, it looks like we're locked into hybrid learning to at least the end of the marking period, which is election day, November 3rd. Is that is that correct? Mr. Delker, it's actually um, November 4th, we would reassess because November 5th is the end of the marking period. But yes, certainly that is what the original message said that we would be hybrid. We tried to create some stability and expect um, so families and teachers could know what to expect for the first marking period. Well, was the recommendation to extend it through the first marking period or can we, I guess there is nothing like local control anymore, but uh, can we exercise a board prerogative to reassess in October? And, yeah, there, uh, there was nothing in the recommendation about a time frame at, at all. The recommendation was recommending instructional models based on the spread. It just says moderate and it just says hybrid or remote are your two instructional options. The time frame was provided by us. So well, yeah, the, if the board would like to reassess in October, you certainly can do that. Well, based on uh, the comments that we heard from Todd, Mr. Leiser, uh, about the data, and, uh, and I agree with him, and uh, Unfortunately, we are being included with the city of Allentown and their numbers uh, and not Northwestern Lehigh School District. Um, what would be the consequences for you, uh, Mrs. Holman and our staff, if we were to uh, go full time in October rather than wait until November to reassess? It would be the, it would just be planning. So it would be planning on our principal's behalf to plan classes just like they did. Now, most of that already exists. And Mr. Oaks to plan um, full buses in terms of the split. So it would be the same planning we did up until last Monday to plan class sizes, to plan rosters, to create separation, to be very transparent with families that we don't have six feet of separation as well as our staff to um, there are many places we do, and there are many places that we have three or four or five feet. We originally made the recommendation based on the American Academy of Pediatrics, who recommended in classroom spaces, three to six feet in classroom spaces, um, as long as there was another mitigating factor like a mask um, that was worn. And so that was why we are originally planning hybrid. The information that came out on Monday not only recommended via moderate spread, they also very clearly explained a hybrid model can be adopted in any model where you are able to get six feet of separation between students was the two rationale for our change in instructional model. Had a couple of conversations briefly with uh, a few elementary kids who uh, were excited about going back to school to see their friends. This is before the latest uh, uh, directive that we got or recommendation, whatever it is that the governor is putting out. They were all excited about going back to school to see their friends. Now, with this hybrid model, depending on where your last name begins in the alphabet, they may not see their friends for the entire year. 
at least the first marking period. And um, the unintended consequences of what uh, we are being told by these experts in PDE and Department of Health and the governor's office is I think causing too much grief and turmoil in the communities. We've totally lost local control as a board for the direction that we're heading. And uh, our uh, Mrs. Holman, you and, and Dr. Sosnovic and, and our administrative staff have worked since June, since our 2020 graduating class that we mourned during their graduation. Uh, and now we're beginning a whole new school year that's gonna be worse than 2020. Uh, the, the, the planning that you have done since June, which has comprehensively covered every, up, every aspect of operation in our buildings, from extracurricular activities, athletics, the classroom layouts, the transportation, the uh, personal protective equipment, sanitization, uh, broadband access, cafeteria serving, all of these things that we have put into plans and then approved by the board within days are scrapped because of new guidance or recommendations that are coming out of the governor. And it, 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 it's time to ask, what are the consequences of non-compliance? Uh, hearing what the, our attorney uh, opined, uh, there's a lot of legal issues there. I don't know what the health issues are and uh, we're not gonna know until someone tries it. And uh, I would like to, to get the board's opinion about what we ought to be doing in the meantime, between now and November 4th, if uh, the numbers change and it looks like it's uh, mitigating and uh, the virus and uh, the numbers at Northwestern Lehigh haven't shown any uh, family uh, illnesses or illnesses being transferred to the school, what if we look at it opening in October? Is that, is that a possibility? Um, I'd like to certainly hear the board members' um, opinions. One of the cautions that's in the PDE advice that I just like the board members to consider is the reason we picked the quarter was the same reason we asked families to select the quarter and, and change because that's obviously the best place for our student to transition from one modality to the other. The other information in the PDE guidance is that they recommended not switching back and forth and that you should remain in one model even if you switch to traditional, that you should be there for a few weeks um, based on the data to be able to stay there. They just were not encouraging, I'll say switching back and forth. And so we can certainly bring you data updates as we have regular board meetings to in September, to in October, in whatever fashion the board would like that data. But Jen, I'd like to even go as far as saying like, I mean, at the end of the day, if we went traditional school, and because of the, the very strict guidelines that the governor is putting into place, like the governor may force us to have to switch. You know what I mean? So, so it's trying to say like that he or she wants to support students being in one modality for a given period of time, just by the strict guidelines could force us to be switching in a matter of two weeks. Yes, probably yeah. in the more restrictive phase than the reverse. That's exactly um, right. Yes. I mean, many of the Valley schools, even as of some board meetings this evening, are switching to completely remote. Um, and so I suspect over the coming days, I saw an article today about East Penn going partially remote. I know it is on Salisbury's board agenda this evening um, to go completely remote for Salisbury K-12. Um, we, we believe strongly in some in-person instruction, which is why we are trying to hold on to that. I don't know what our experience will be. Um, Governor has said strongly he will um, not close schools. Um, however, the, the, the latest three pieces of information are certainly barriers that he is putting, they, Department of Health, Department of Education are putting in place. Um, when some of this was previously, as Mr. Delacruz said, figured out and board approved within the previous parameters by the same agencies. Um, some of that I think is because it's evolving quickly and some of it I think is, is putting new parameters in place at a late date. But yes, 
year right at any moment, just like he, the governor did in March. No, that was a governor closure. Um, came out on March 13th and closed schools. And if you recall, it was first for two weeks, then it was for a month, and then it was for the remainder of the year. So yes, the governor could do that again. Um, I don't know if that will happen or not. But yes, he they could do direct a um, modality of instruction. Our parents okay. have certainly said they would like some consistency was the reason for us giving a modality some time. Couple of thoughts, Mr. Deliger. Uh, f first of all, in terms of where we are right now, there's no question that the pandemic and all the related decision-making are causing immense heartache and hardship uh, for families and for children. There's no question about that. But I think as a board, the only thing we have control over right now is what we do in regard to what we believe is safety for the students and, and the staff. Mrs. Holman has clearly said that given the new, newer guidelines and the emphasis on six feet that she no longer felt that she was in a position to guarantee that. I, I have to say that I, I support that. I saw photographs of some of our classrooms set up for 25 and 26 children. It, it caused me a great deal of concern about the safety of welfare students and staff within those classes. So when we went back initially to the, the prior plan, we were basing three feet in, in a large number of areas. And the reality of seeing that visually, as opposed to discussing it was in a plan was uh, kind of an eye opener for me. So I, I just wanna say that I think that this has been a no win situation for everybody, gut wrenching decisions for the administration. But uh, when the executive officer says to me, this is what I think I need to do to provide safety and welfare to students, I'll, I, will, I will make this difficult decision. Uh, going forward, uh, the plan as previously presented used the language of nimble and pivot, nimble and pivot, nimble and pivot. And I think that that's what you're suggesting now, Bill, that we be nimble and pivot when and where we can. I think everybody wants to see the kids back in school full time. If and when the administration thinks that they're in a position where they can say to this board, we're comfortable with taking the responsibility for the safety and welfare of our students and staff. I would certainly, certainly want to support the change at that time. Um, thank you, um, Dr. Ruffle. The only thing I would mention, and I'm not sure what classroom or classrooms you saw photographs of, um, our administrative team, because we were just completing our survey of the of what instructional model are probably the only ones that really know how many students they were really going to have. Because if you remember, although people thought it was a, a fake effort or something, um, you know, we put that survey out for commitment. And, and the Monday that this original advice came out was the last day our survey was completing. And so that was the survey by which we asked for commitment from families. And we had almost 500 families committed to a modality other than traditional. Um, because of their personal preference based on everything, um, you know, we have. And so I would just say that I don't know how many chairs were in the classroom, but that might or might not have been the number of actual students in that classroom based on students that might have selected online. Fair, fair enough. I understand that. But even if there were five less students in the classrooms, it was tight. It, it was very tight in terms of a six foot of distance between students. So the other question I have right now is, if you've been able to recover since last week, do you have any sense right now of how many students are intending to go hybrid as opposed to who will be um, digital, full-time digital? Um, well, I did as of earlier this week, um, but I can give you the numbers as of earlier this week. There was about 57 students that had chosen Digital Academy earlier this week. Um, and the remainder of the 500 were students that selected online with the Northwestern teacher. Um, and so that was as of the commitments. If you recall, my message on Monday essentially slid everyone that was traditional to um, hybrid. And so they, they, the principals over the course of the week, I suspect got a few switches um, that switched some of those students that previously selected um, traditional to completely online. Some of the families um, actually prefer that in terms of consistency. One of the reasons we heard of, of some of the exodus to private cyber schools or to our digital academy was really for the consistency purposes and that they would have a consistent model across the year. And so, um, you know, certainly online with Northwestern teachers is somewhere in the area of 450 students. 
across the district K-12. Who was the well, uh, how many responded saying they wanted the traditional model done? Well, that was not a commitment. So we said anyone who wanted the, the traditional didn't have to respond. Oh. So the last commitment was if you wish to select traditional, you don't need to move any further. If you wish to select online with a Northwestern teacher or a digital academy to fill out the commitment survey. Um, prior to that, so remember we issued three surveys. The first survey was about 90% of our families. That was the one in June. And then we issued one later that just kind of tried to get a feel for folks, which is one we tried to offer online with a Northwestern teacher as well as and so that split was anywhere between 70 30 at any, in any given building to 85 15. And so, meaning 70% of the students in person, 30% online, 85% in person, 15% online, um, depending on the building. And then we asked for a third survey, which was the commitment survey, where we only asked people to commit if they wanted something other than traditional. And that was where I said it was about 500 families that filled out that survey. So we think well, maybe 75, 70 to 75% got, got feel would want traditional? Well, yeah, it's, it's, I suspect it's close to the opposite of the 500. So if you take 17, if you take um, 500 off of the 2000 students we have, right. that, that's your percentage that essentially wants traditional, I would suspect. What we don't know until we get some of the reports in is how many have switched to private, um, you know, parochial schools, et cetera, or private charters or private cyber we will certainly as they enroll get those records requests but i'm not sure we have all of those yet and we're hearing private schools are going back traditional model st joe's for instance um i th think elementary are i don't know that secondary is so i heard um and maybe mrs yadish knows this i don't want to stick on the spot that um allentown central is not um so i think it's the diocese elementaries but not necessarily the diocese secondaries and i don't know if that's all diocese or just allentown central and I think others are offering, like, you know, our local circle of seasons, I believe, is offering traditional and hybrid and online. Other comments? Dr. Warfel, thank you for your insight as always. Um, I'm at the point now where I, I, I really don't know what the... Uh, uh, what we fear most, do we fear uh, legal action or, or government intervention, or do we fear the virus? What are we, what are we responding to here? Um, Bill, I do have one more question if no one else had. Go ahead. And, and you led into it with a legal question. I had a, a legal question for Jessica, because John asked the, kind of the question coming at it from one direction, but, uh, and I'm not up on my act numbers, so I apologize, but, um, Aren't we governed under the state of Pennsylvania um, EDU Act to provide adequate um, education to all students um, in the district? And so my question is, you know, does an act or a law supersede guidance? And are we and we've been sued in the past for not providing adequate educational, you know, to every student? Um, what are, what's our potential here being, you know, brought to court? based on not providing adequate education, it deemed as, you know, the opposite of John's question, essentially. Understood, Mr. Leiser, and I think it's a fine line. You're absolutely correct, because you also have to provide appropriate education for the children. Um, but I think you're in a better position if you're following the guidance uh, that was issued by the state. But it's not going to, uh, I, I can't tell you you're not going to get sued, because we've, we've seen a trend in special ed cases um, since COVID has hit. So. You know, I don't want to use the phrase, but you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I can't promise you that you're not going to see lawsuits from the other side of things either. You're, you're absolutely in a tough position. Um, but I think there, the defense is we followed the guidance that was issued by the state as a result of, um, you know, the, the cases and what the Department of Health and the PDE um, issued. And, and you have a defense there. Mr. Leiser, I'm not sure what you um, are hearing, but I would also argue that the instruction we are providing, particularly because we're offering a synchronistic model, I know people will argue with this and there's arguments on all sides of this, um, is a quality education and is authentic. And I believe our staff will do an exceptional job doing that. Um, I think it will look, and we'll talk about this in the next plan, even if we end up in remote, a different situation than it was in the spring, we've done some revision. We didn't have the ability to stream. They didn't have access to materials or whiteboards 
or even be remotely prepared for what we were asking them to do in the spring. And so I do think it looks a little bit different, even if we end up in a remote model for a public health reason, um, our, our ability to be able to provide instruction in an authentic way online in both our professional development, as well as the curriculum resources and repository that you approved um, Oh, I think it was last month, last week, two weeks ago, um, for our teachers to be able to be to utilize whether we are in person, whether the students are online, we expect that students will be able to stream into their classrooms and participate. Is it the same? It's not exactly the same, um, but we're doing as best we can to model and mirror an in-person experience, even though the location is physically different. It is certainly the hardship on families in terms of having to have monitoring and um, Childcare for those students on days they're not in school. That that's the main feedback I'm getting, Jen, from the community is really more for that younger age group where you know parents are working, they've got jobs, they're they're not there as the teacher of that child to oversee that class experience, and you know especially kids with special needs, um, you know there's some real challenges on how how that you know, how that's going to potentially work, and so that puts a strain on the family. So but I'm hearing it mainly from that younger you know, under middle school type, type age group, less so I would say high school and middle school, where I think they're, those kids should be well equipped to pay attention. And for the most part, right, other than some of the special needs kids, perhaps. Um, but it's that, that, that elementary age that I have the most concern that I think we will potentially see a gap here where this group that's affected from spring now into fall um, could definitely be behind where they in a typical school traditional model would have been six months, nine months, a year later, so. Yeah, and, and that's the same families we're hearing from as well. And I mean, um, Mrs. Burlett and Mrs. Poley have done a lot of work with our elementary staff to try to make that experience. But we also recognize as much as we say in our circumstances, you know, we have Zooms available, but it requires some parental support for those younger children who are not as independent to be able to hop on. And so although we will have the expectation um, that they are mandatory for older students, we have to have some flexibility because that might not be a reasonable requirement for students who might be at home, who might um, have parents who work a different shift who might be at a grandparent's house who might be at daycare and so the elementary principals are all very aware of that and are taking some of those questions and concerns and trying to work with that um, it's also some of the reason why when districts have made shifts that that differ by level have made a more concerted effort to have students in the elementary in person and so some districts that are are going fully remote at the high school are hybrid um, at the elementary for the exact same reason and so if we did decide to make a shift at some point, it might end up being we value the in-person instruction that are that are elementary students and and we would prefer to do something different with secondary. And so you might split the decision um, in the future in that way for exactly that reason. I'd like to uh, veer off just for a minute here on a related COVID item, and that is uh, athletics on Friday. We, uh, I think we're going to hear from PIAA regarding their decision to go ahead with athletics. Now, we, we as a board and as a district have an approved uh, plan to go forward with, uh, with our uh, fall sports. And uh, I would uh, like to uh, poll the board to see if there's anyone who would object to, uh, to starting up our athletic programs uh, if the uh, PIAA recommends that uh, it is safe to do that. I don't know if PIA is doing that, but they're, they're, t they're either going to go with the recommendation for the governor not to do it until uh, January 1st, or they're going to uh, uh, open fall sports. And uh, I'd like to hear from the board to see if there's anybody who would object to doing that. Otherwise, we'll go ahead with the plan that we have in place that we already approved. Any objections? I see heads shaking no. So I guess uh, Mrs. Holman, Mr. Zimmerman will see what PIAA comes up with on Friday and then uh, proceed with our plan to participate in uh, extracurricular activities. Mr. Zimmerman, would you like to give an update? Because I think you have one. I do, if you if you indulge me just briefly, uh, Mr. Delacre is, is correct. So yesterday, the uh, Senate Oversight uh, committee held a hearing. Uh, it went fairly well, depending on, on where you're at. Um, the uh, board of directors do meet this Friday to, to determine and vote on their position. Uh, 
obviously I'm, I'm involved in that. I fully anticipate the motion that they're going to vote on will be to play the fall season as scheduled, uh, which means the first official day of practice and tryouts is, is August 24th uh, and with contests starting 9-11. As far as practices are concerned, uh, I can assure the board that we are uh, ready to go uh, with if that is the case. Uh, once the PIAA decision is made, uh, we also put in processes to, to meet as a Colonial League no later than Monday morning, um, which means we may be having it over the weekend, but to determine what our, our schedules are going to look like. Uh, again, we'll continue to plan to work with, uh, continue to work with the PIAA and the Colonial League to provide the students at Northwestern LEI with as much of a fall season as we are able. Um, but full disclosure, sc schools, there are going to be some schools that may opt out. Uh, of playing, and um, there are several variables that, that may prevent a season from happening, including this this new metric, which is push, pushing schools to, to a virtual, fully virtual. Um, you know, the, what's out there is that if you go on this five to seven day virtual or 14 day virtual, that your programs and your facilities are also shut down. Um, Again, I'm, I'm very blessed to represent Northwestern at the various levels of the league and district and PIAA state level. Uh, one thing that uh, is absolutely certain, the PIAA is 100% committed to providing the student athletes of Pennsylvania with three seasons. How that looks may be much different than what we are used to and we'll continue to roll with the punches. Um, another good news item on that, Mr. Delegar, if you don't mind, is uh, if we are able to get on the field, our marching band and our cheerleaders are now permitted. Uh, Another hot topic is spectators. As of right now, they still are not permitted. Um, but Dr. Labardi at the PIAA is still trying to work, uh, work his magic a little bit and try and get that so at least maybe parents can attend. Uh, he's not budging, um, but we're, we haven't given up. Um, and, and he is sticking, making us that 250, 250 capacity uh, limit uh, for outdoor and 25 for indoor, which makes it very difficult for a sport like volleyball. Um, so, again, we will keep trying, and uh, that's, that's my update. I'll, I'm here for any questions. Any questions for Jason? Yeah, how does that relate to clubs, science club, drama, all those? Uh, right, right now, PIAA does not govern those. Um, so all of those clubs right now we have in our extracurricular plan that you, uh, you guys were approved uh, with the – uh, return to school plan, um, communicated with uh, many of my advisors. Uh, again, it might look much different. Uh, so let's, let's just take the fall drama, for example. Um, if we're able to get out there and do it safely and, and rehearse, you know, we, you might see a virtual, uh, a virtual production. Uh, same with band and, and chorus. Um, you know, it, we're, we're trying, we're, we're, we're finding every little loophole that we can to, and I don't want to say it in a negative way, but any, we're trying to stay within the guidance and the recommendations to provide a safe opportunity for kids, um, including, you know, singing. Listen, we might have to sing with masks on and we might need to go outdoors to rehearse. So, you know, fortunately, I have a, a great band director in Allie Klein that's that's working with us. So as of right now, uh, Mr. Rex, they are still uh, proposing to go. Uh, in a nutshell, what we're doing is a lot of times we used to meet during flex to in order to limit the travel and, and in schools. And now that we're in this hybrid model, uh, we're really trying to push that to be extracurricular. And if you're going to hold a, a meeting during uh, a flex option, uh, you're going to try and do that virtually through Zoom. So, you know, we're working with fundraisers and all that other type of stuff. But as of right now, we, we have not canceled anything and I, at the high school level, and I don't see the need to at this point. Okay. And then we have all the equipment necessary if it does need to be virtual to make sure that can happen. Or is there anything we need to prepare for? No, Mr. Rex, I appreciate that question. Uh, no, we've been able to manage that um, so far, um, including uh, let, let's pretend spectators aren't going to be permitted. Um, I also have a plan ready to unroll with, with getting that professionally uh, 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 live streamed, excuse me. Um, and that's, that's all of our events. So yeah, even we even had a plan, Mr. Rex, that let's say the band wasn't able to perform on a Friday night. We were actually going to go out there with, on a night that the stadium was empty and, and, film their show and either live stream it or, or play it on replay and, and put it on again on a Friday night. So we got a couple different things and we got good people here getting really creative to try and navigate through this. Um, okay. To add to Mr. Zimmerman in terms of chorus and band, that's probably 
probably where you'll see the biggest impact because of some of the droplet distribution across K-12. We likely will bring you some revisions to our music um, page that's in the health and safety plan in September. Um, there is not recommended as Mr. Zimmerman talked a lot about outside. Some of our younger students typically practice inside. So some of that will have to shift outside, whether it's an instrument, a woodwind instrument or a choral instrument will be shifting outside. Um, there's not recommendations for them to practice or play inside. And just in regards to band, some of the, some of the things, Mr. Rex, like our, our, our drill this year, we're not going to be doing a lot of movement with our drill. We're going to stay, we're going to get six feet apart, make it fun. We bought things like bell covers for the horns and things like that. So, and there's constantly things that are coming out. There's, there's now masks out there with, with whole slits that are cut in the, in the mouth. So we're constantly looking at that stuff and making it happen. So. Well, in my uh, decades of being on the school board, it's always been amazing to me how uh, athletics always kind of uh, brings the public out. And uh, and this here's another case, and I'm not knocking it. I'd like to see it go forward. But here's another case where we're talking about uh, the education of our children going virtual, and uh, but we're going to allow athletics to be held in our stadiums and our uh, gymnasiums. So be it, um, it's always amazing, but perhaps this might be a good omen or good thing if the results show that we don't get the cases through our athletic programs uh, of COVID filtering into our, our athletes. Uh, that would be, uh, I think some data that we could use to argue for opening the schools for education purposes and not just athletics. Mr. Bellick, I just said briefly, just to give you a little data point here, and it's, it's not official data, but in across District 11, um, over 130,000 um, screenings, not tests, screenings have been conducted of student athletes who have returned since, since June. And uh, Mrs. Holman, refresh my memory, it was six, was the number six? Four. Four, four positive COVID cases out of that. That's a tight, whoever responded in District 11. So, um, and I don't have mine handy. I, I, I've seen so much data. I just came from a District 11 meeting. What was ours? This is only like 5,500. Yeah, um, you gave me the data. We had yeah. obviously no positive student COVID screenings when they came in, but you had like 4,500 across all of our athletes since they had been doing their preseason workouts. Anybody that is else? one of the data points we, I mean, I asked Jay to kind of take a look at and continue to monitor that there's many, many data points we look at, you know, you, you, that is just one of them, but it does attest to what our mitigation efforts are, our procedures in place with our kids. And in that case, our coaches, which I suspect um, will be good data to transfer to our teachers in terms of are our mitigation efforts successful in containing the spread in our community with our kids and our, and our, um, our plan. Any other board members want to, uh, Chime in here before we move on. We have, we really have not had the chance as a board to uh, discuss more than the original plan that we put together because of all the changes that came through on these uh, uh, surprise press conferences coming out of Harrisburg that throw a monkey wrench into every plan that we come out with. And I wouldn't, uh, be a bit surprised that after we leave tonight after this discussion if uh, we hear more in the next couple of days from our state government and uh, uh, cause us to uh, regroup once again. And, and I'm, I'm still at the point as a school board member, uh, I'm really wrestling with this idea that we're fearing our state government more than we're fearing the virus in the way we're uh, approaching our our education of our children. And, uh, the, you know, at this point, they're not children, they're numbers, they're, they're kids at home with their parents. We've, we've, we're going to lose control of or lose contact with all of our kids that our staff has been able to nurture over the years and educate uh, like we've done so successfully at uh, Northwestern Lehigh. And it just really it, it just really inflames me to uh, see us having to to bend to these requirements 
or recommendations or whatever they are coming out of these uh, offices in Harrisburg, uh, bureaucrats who are dictating to the local control what has to be what has to be controlled. I don't know where the legislator is on this. The uh, Constitution of Pennsylvania puts the operation of schools under the legislature, who then uh, designated school boards to uh, carry out the uh, the requirements of our public education, and uh, you know, and and we we've, we've got this governor and his staff who keep coming out with these recommendations, and it is just, uh, I think it's the unintended consequences that we're going to see months from now, maybe years. I think uh, we'll look back and, and uh, be sorry for the actions that were taken. That's just my opinion. I'd like to hear from some other board members to see what the uh, what the idea would be or what the, uh, the thoughts would be to uh, open prior to the end of the marking period if the numbers around us show that we can do that. I think um, that reevaluating i know there are other school districts that are doing that like every two weeks and that has been their position it's just almost consistently reevaluating the plans are all there so i think that if we would need to go either way we're we're prepared and i just think to keep reevaluating and seeing where we are with the numbers in our district and then make that decision for our students and staff. Thank you, Mrs. Pazinski. Thank you. Mr. Gallagher, I mean, I, I, I think this is just such a, um, it's such a tough time. Um, and I think as a parent and, you know, all of us on this board have um, children and grandchildren in the school district. So it feels like a very personal decision um, for our own families and, and the, the community. And I know that I've been super torn about this um, because I feel like we're making decisions, as you said earlier on, that you know perhaps lumps our school district into those of many in our county that have different populations and different infection rates, right? And I feel the weight of making the right decision by our kids feels so heavy right now, knowing that the best instruction for students is always being with their teachers and not behind a computer screen. Um, so I would be completely in support of reviewing this, whether it's October, you know, whatever month we decide to take a look at this. And at the end of the day, I feel comfortable if, if Jess says that there is you know, legal implications, no matter which way you go, then I would be in favor of trying to get them back with their students, with the teachers, with their friends, and trying to put some sort of normalcy to their education and consistency in their education, knowing that kids learn at such different levels. And I know as a parent, I'm not going to do as good of a job as their teachers can in monitoring their progress and their their, their efforts that they're putting into their classwork and their enthusiasm in the classroom and where they're struggling and where they're excelling, like that can't happen here in my home, like it will happen in a classroom. So I think the, the risk that we run is like, do we, do we run that risk and put them in schools? And if that infection rate goes up, then we have to do the right thing and pull them out. But worrying about the what ifs and what ifs and not making the right decision to just put them in school and go with what happens is a really tough call and it feels really heavy and difficult. I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, Mrs. Scheffler. Anyone else before we leave this topic? Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in for a second. Um, I support the 5D model today moving forward. Um, I know where we are, it is what it is. Um, sooner, I think we can get there. I think that like Todd, the other Todd said, the data is not showing that this this plan warrants itself. And, uh, you know, I just I saw today an article. There's only six people in the hospital being treated for COVID in all of Lehigh Valley. And here we are closing the schools. Um, but no one talks about that metric. Uh, but, you know, sooner, as long as everything works, uh, I'm in favor of it. I leave it to the administration as far as the timing I understand the timing of a marking period, maybe it transitions a little bit easier, 
so I'd be sensitive to that. Uh, but I'm in full support of uh, of all day back to school in person. I guess I'll I'll also chime in on this. Uh, I have a bad connection, so bear with me. Um, I I stand by a minute. Okay, can everybody hear me now? Good job. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I I support um, that we we reevaluate as we go along because this is obviously a changing uh, problem that we have here in the district. But um, obviously, I'm in full support of going back to school as soon as we can. Uh, but I do um, rely on on Jen Holman and her staff to, you know, educate me on what we need to do and when we need to do it type of thing. I feel that they have, you know, their finger on the pulse. They're, co they're connected with uh, more people than I am connected with that can um, hopefully guide us in the, in the right direction. But uh, obviously I'm, I'm for come, going back to school as, as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you, Mr. Cassiano. Anyone else before we leave? Well, thank you all for, for your opinions. And uh, I want you to know my frustration with this whole issue is in no way connected to the performance of our administrators and what uh, Mrs. Holman and Dr. Sosnovic have been able to do with, with, uh, with the plans that uh, we created. They were, they were be, begun in June they were used as a model and a template for the rest of the districts in the county. They uh, addressed every conceivable uh, issue that you could think of uh, related to COVID, COVID in this, uh, this pandemic that we're going through. And um, I just think we're at the point now where uh, decisions have to be made to, to get back to normal rather than going on forever uh, virtually. And uh, the data that we have in front of us that we've received from various sources can be manipulated to show whatever that person generating the data wants us to hear. Uh, but uh, we're blessed to have uh, Jan and, and uh, Dr. Sosnovic and the rest of our staff to uh, be able to sort through this and, and lead us to uh, making the best out of this difficult situation that we're in. And thank you, uh, board, for your comments this evening. And um, this is really the first time that we've had to, uh, to find out where we stand as a board with the feelings towards this issue. And uh, I think uh, Mrs. Holman, uh, I think she's got a, a better feel for, for what we want to see here. And good luck, uh, Mr. Zimmerman, with our athletic programs, uh, possibly beginning on Friday. Uh, I hope they do, and I hope the, the uh, results of the uh, infection or non-infection uh, can uh, move us in the direction to open up the schools as well, for the classrooms as well. So let's move into um, the next uh, Two items that are related to uh, COVID, Dr. Sosnovic, uh, we have the uh, continuity of education and the flexible instructional days that uh, need to be made public. I think I will take the first one. Um, the continuity of education plan is something that you approved back in March. This is a model that the Pennsylvania Department of Education requires that we complete and submit to them for any remote learning plans. So in the event that we would have to go completely remote at some point, um, like we did in March, they required a continuity of education plan. This is the same template that you approved um, back in the spring. I would tell you that there are significant differences between the expectations that were on the plan in March. Um, you know, internally, we've been calling the education that we provided in March, certainly it was an emergency type of learning and it was an emergency type of learning plan with certainly different expectations. So you will see on this plan differences in the schedule. Um, we are required to do a full day schedule for all students. And so, as I mentioned in the last board meeting, 180 school days and the 900 and 990 hours 
um, are still required. So you will see full school days of either synchronous or asynchronous learning that will be um, included and you will see the daily schedules. You will also see requirements for um, part of the time on any given day to be synchronous with their class. Um, given the aforementioned information about elementary that we will offer that recognizing that there are times when our elementary students will not be able to connect because they are not quite as independent. You will also see information that is significantly different about teacher and student expectations. Um, certainly had, have had the time to develop some of that as well as um, um, refine that information through our professional development and then you will see differences in the grading structure. Those are the primary changes. I would ask um, any of our administrators, um, Mrs. Stitzel as well, if there's anything else they'd like to point out on the continuity of education plan, although I am presenting it, it was really a collaborative effort our, of our entire administrative team to put together what will remote learning look like should we at some point either have to be there because of the um, closures because of a positive or several positive COVID cases that Dr. Sosnovic presented earlier and or if for some reason we are um, totally remote instead of hybrid as our educational model. Any administrators and or Mrs. Stitzel if you have anything to add. So this plan, the continuity of education is only required if we go 100% remote, correct? That is correct. Okay. And the next item is important for our families to know about flexible instruction days. Mrs. Stutzel, do you want me to start this or do, would you like to? No, I can do that. That's fine. Um, actually, this is not directly related to COVID um, because this has been uh, an option for uh, the Pennsylvania Department of Education and districts across the state for the last number of years. So um, it's just that with all of the improvements that we've made to online learning and the increase in the number of computers that we now have available for all of our students, um, we think it's a pretty good time to go ahead and ask for you to approve um, us to apply for the flexible instruction days with the Department of Ed. So flexible instructional days, um, really it, it's about having all of districts the ability to provide some kind of continuity of instruction on days when it's traditionally closed. So when our school is traditionally closed due to, usually it's due to inclement weather or some kind of an emergency. Um, I like to think of them somewhat as like a cyber snow day, um, but we can choose to use flexible instructional days throughout the year. Um, and if we do that, we would not be required to make them up. They're deemed a school day by the Pennsylvania Department of Education and they'll count towards the number of the instructional days that are required by this Pennsylvania school code. Um, our district, if we are approved, is not allowed to exceed five instructional days during any school year. Um, and it would be valid for a period of three years. So it would cover us from this year and moving forward two years as well. Um, now, if we are approved, then we obviously would be communicating our intention to use flexible instructional days with families moving forward. But we only have the ability to use five a year. Thank you, Mrs. Be, Sitz. Yep. Are there any questions from the board before we move on? Were you gonna say something else, Leanne? I was just going to ask if there are any questions. So this is going to uh, be in effect into the future and uh, not necessarily just COVID related. Right. Okay. Uh, the next three items that are on our agenda, the Apex Learning Agreement is a cost per student for AP and honors courses uh, that we offer uh, remotely. 305 is the Center for Humanistic Change Renewal that we uh, vetted and also vetted the Seesaw Agreement, which is uh, an elementary management system for uh, online programs that uh, we talked about in a workshop. So with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve. The C3.01 was just information. That was just an update. So there's no action required for that one, but uh, a motion for 3.02 3 
the uh, continuity of education plan through 3.06, the seesaw agreement uh, would entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Mrs. Scheffler. Motion by Mrs. Scheffler. Second. Second, Hernandez. Second by Mr. Hernandez. Are there any comments or questions about any of the items that uh, are in this motion? Hearing on Mrs. Partinio, will you please call the roll? Sure, Don Cassiano. Don Cassiano. Willard Deliker? Yes. Todd Hernandez? Yes. Todd Leiser? Yes. Marcy Pazinski? Yes. Alan Rex? Aye. Rachel Scheffler? Yes. James Warfel? Yes. And John Cassiano, are you there? I think I saw a thumbs up coming from Mr. Cassiano. Oh, okay. I can't hear him, so, okay. Okay, motion carried. Let's move into policy. Uh, we have uh, two first readings and two uh, second readings to talk about this evening. Dr. Sosnobi. Yeah, uh, Mr. Deliker, the two first readings are as we described at the work session, we have received no additional comments. The two second readings for your approval tonight, uh, the 305 employment of substitutes and 626 federal fiscal compliance. We also have not received any additional comments. <clears throat> okay. Uh, hearing that, I uh, would entertain a motion to uh, approve 4.02, which is second reading for policy 305 and 626. Motion Rex. Motion by Mr. Rex. Second, Hernandez. Second by Mr. Hernandez. Any comments or questions about the policies? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 I, I apologize. Uh, I apologize. Uh, please, uh, Mrs. Partinio, will you please call the roll? John Cassiano? Yes. Willard Deliker? Yes. Todd Hernandez? Yes. Todd Leiser? Yes. Marcy Pazinski? Yes. Alan Rex? Aye. Rachel Scheffler? Yes. James Warfel? Yes. Thank you. Motion approved. Uh, moving into operations, uh, again, I would like to take all six of the uh, action items under, on, under operations as a consent agenda. Uh, the first item uh, are bus stops, which we do not make public. They are available to you uh, or have been available to you uh, through authentication. And uh, they are confidential for security reasons. Uh, 5.02, uh, Mr. Uh, Oaks, would you like to uh, please run through the uh, the brandy wine rates. I think these are just the van rates that have been added to the uh, the uh, rates that we pay for brandy wine. That that is correct, sir. Um, we we are only using brandy wine for van um, services at the moment, so that's why that addendum is attached. Okay. And then uh, five point zero three is the addendum that addresses the COVID issues regarding uh, the use of. Uh, Contractors under Act 13, I believe. Is that correct, Mr. Oaks? That's actually Leslie, I believe, that put that on there. Okay. The, this has this has been vetted in the uh, workshop. Uh, we did see these before. Any other comments, Mrs. Uh, Frisbee? Yeah, I'm just commenting quick on 503. As you recall from two weeks ago, this is the addendum that we needed to put in place because of the disruption of operations due to COVID. Um, we needed some addendum language to the existing contract for the 1920 school year. And that has been vetted through um, Attorney Moyer's office. Thank you. And the uh, facility rental recommendation is to uh, 
stop the uh, uh, the use of facilities during the uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic that we have. Uh, we won't change the policy. We will just end the uh, the uh, use of facilities until we are cleared uh, from this uh, pandemic. The uh, weatherproofing technologies and the McClure HVAC maintenance agreements were also vetted at the workshop. So with that, uh, I would uh, ask for a uh, motion to approve uh, 5.01 through 5.06. So moved, Pazinski. Motion by Mrs. Pazinski. Second, Mrs. Scheffler. Second by Mrs. Scheffler. Are there any comments or questions about any of the operations agenda items? Hearing none, uh, Mrs. Partinio, please call the roll. John Cassiano? Yes. <clears throat> Willard Deliker? Yes. Todd Hernandez? Yes. Todd Leiser? Yes. Marcy Pazinski? Yes. Alan Rex? Aye. Rachel Scheffler? Yes. And James Warfel? Yes. Thank you, motion carry. Under district finances, we have uh, seven items that uh, we will uh, take action on tonight. And uh, the first item, I'd like to uh, ask Mrs. Holman if she would uh, talk about the uh, educational foundation donation that we just received. I certainly will, um, but this is actually Mrs. Stitzel and I see Mr. Walbert is on as well. Um, this is a little bit out of the ordinary and certainly an additional donation from our educational foundation as most of you know. We have an educational foundation that supports us in many, many things um, and does run a number of fundraisers each year to support educational options. Um, I do believe they came to the table um, at one of their most recent meetings in an effort to try to help um, the pandemic and what we were going through and, you know, how can they contribute and be helpful. And so they did um, donate $45,000 to assist with online learning for the 2021 school year. Um, this is an above and beyond the typical, you know, teacher mini grants that they donate as well as the ITC. And so we are going to be able to utilize that to purchase and we already have purchased the cameras and microphone systems for each of our classrooms that will be critical in being able to um, <clears throat> The, uh, the synchronous instruction from each classroom, as well as partially fund the eLearn 21 content, which is the content I talked about earlier as a repository for our teachers to select from um, that you approved at last board meeting. But Mrs. Stitzel? No, you said it perfectly, Jen. Um, I don't know if Mr. Walbert is on. I don't know if he's on for this purpose. Um, but um, we certainly thank the foundation a great deal. They are always great partners with us. And, and I've said this many, many times, there are many things that we wouldn't be able to do um, without them. And they always come to the table and, and ask how they can be helpful and try to match um, their fundraising and their volunteer efforts and the, the work of their board with things that we need. And this is just one more example of that. <clears throat> yes, indeed. Thank you, uh, Mr. Walbert and your foundation for stepping up with this assistance to, uh, to make this uh, education of our kids during this difficult time a little bit easier. Thank you very much. You're welcome, our pleasure. Uh, the rest of the items under district finances 6.02, uh, Plan Con K is uh, involved with the bond, the refinancing that we just did, the uh, 6.03 Northern Valley EMS agreement is, uh, to provide an ambulance for $150 for football games. Uh, this is a renewal. Hopefully we'll be able to use them this year. 6.04 is the uh, Behavioral Health Associates. Uh, this is for general and specific ed programming uh, as needed. And the Whitehall Copley Agreement for Special Ed Services, all of which have been uh, vetted at the uh, workshop, along with the reports and the bills. And before I ask for a motion, Leslie, Mrs. Frisbee, is there anything you'd like to mention about the reports and the bills? Um, nothing further on the reports unless there's questions. I would just like to draw your attention to the bills. You will see multiple check summaries. Um, one, since we haven't had a board meeting since the end of June, you'll see that final check round that we did to close out the year on June 30th. You'll see the check summary for the July, what would have been the July timing of board meetings for when we cut checks during that month, as well as the um, bills for August that you would approve 
um, for this month. Um, so that's why you see multiple checklistings and summaries on that report tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Frisbee for that clarification. Uh, with that, I would uh, entertain a motion for uh, 6.01 through 6.07. Motion Rex. Motion by Mr. Rex. Second Warfel. Second by Dr. Warfel. Any comments or question on the finance agenda? Hearing none, uh, Mrs. Partinio, please call the roll for vote. John Cassiano. Aye. <clears throat> Willard Deliker. Aye. Todd Hernandez. Yes. Todd Leiser. Yes. Marcy Pazinski. Yes. Ellen Rex. Aye. Rachel Scheffler. Yes. James Warfall. Yes. Uh, thank you and motion carries. Under other reports, uh, foundation report, is there an, another foundation report, Mrs. Stetzel, other than uh, what the good news that we've gotten from the, uh, the uh, donation for the uh, assistance in online learning this evening? I do have an update uh, and that is just based on what I had mentioned last month. Uh, the foundation recently held their annual golf tournament in early August. And more importantly, they've also recently hired a part-time development director that will serve as a point of contact for all foundation programs. They will assist with public relations and communications and their major focus will be on ways to raise funding. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and uh, since we do have Mr. Walbert in uh, attendance this evening, uh, I would uh, take the prerogative of offering him uh, Courtesy of the floor at this point. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Deliker. Just real quickly, just to uh, um, expand on what Leanne was was talking about. First, on the golf tournament, I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Frisbee for attending and and uh, participating in the event, and then also like to congratulate Mr. Oaks, who uh, brought a team and, like usual, kicked everybody's butt in the golf tournament. He won. <laughs> so <laughs> that and. Uh, uh, also like to say, expanding to the new development director, I mean, it's been very challenging for us uh, this year, just like everybody else, but we feel it's very important to be able to um, do more, quite frankly, and, and help out as much as we can. And at this point, I think we got to a point where uh, we felt we needed more help to do that. And our goal is to figure out how we can strategically help the school district more and more as time goes on and be even more successful as a, as a community. So there's going to be more to follow with regards to, to, uh, you know, some of the changes and advancements uh, that we're making. And I'm sure that uh, very soon you guys will all meet our new development director. Thank you, Mr. Walbert. And thank you for attending and all you do for our district. Thanks. Uh, Committee reports. Uh, Dr. Warfel, is there anything to report from the IU? Uh, we met on Monday evening, Mr. Deliker. It was a pretty brief and routine meeting, but there was some good news. I had previously shared with you that due to some funding constraints, the IU was um, going to be peeling back a number of their behavioral health services. They were able to have the funding to maintain their partial hospitalization programs which are school-based, but they also do a great deal of work with parents and students through um, therapeutic supports outside of school that directly relate to student success in school. They, in working with the County Office of Mental Health, have been able to um, secure the funding to can maintain all those programs through December 31st. So that's uh, really good news. I think I've worked over the course of my career with many, many students who need the kind of support and um, their, success, their success in school directly, it's directly related to what comes through this program. So that was, that was really good news. Good. Thank you, Dr. Warfel. Uh, LCTI, Mr. Rex. Yes, uh, as you can see, the uh, meeting minutes were posted on the agenda here. Our, our next meeting is going to be the 26th. Uh, they hope to have a reopening plan out to us next week early so we can see it before the meeting. As of right now, there will be 650 students from Allentown that will not be attending. So it's gonna be a challenge. It's 
you know, how do you teach a student to, you know, solder a pipe remotely? How do you teach them how to cook a cake or bake a cake remotely? So there's a lot of challenges there. So we can only, can only imagine the hurdles that have to be crossed. So uh, meetings next week, uh, we did have a meeting in June also it was uh, June 24th was our last meeting. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Rex. Uh, under L3C, I uh, will be uh, asking Dr. Uh, Barbara Kissler to come to our meeting maybe every other month or quarterly to update us on L3C since I'm uh, no longer a trustee there. My term ran out in June. Um, Rec Commission, uh, Mr. Hernandez. Uh, business as usual, the fields are all ready. Uh, there's been some summer sports played and fall sports, so it's good to see the kids out there. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the past, but the walking path is uh, completed. So uh, come on out, take a walk around the, the fields there. It's a pretty nice path. Uh, we'll probably do a couple more things to it um, as time progresses, but the uh, uh, park is looking good. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving into old business. Uh, is there any old business to be brought up by the board or the administration? Nothing on the agenda, so we'll move into new business. Any new business to be brought to the board? Uh, yes, I have. I have a letter that I need to read to the board this evening. This letter is to inform you of my resignation from the Northwestern Lehigh School Board of Directors, effective September 1st, 2020, as I will no longer be residing in the school district. Although I will no longer reside in our district, I will continue to be an advocate for quality education for children but now it will be for the children and families in Carbon County. This has not been an easy decision for me to make as Northwestern has been an important and influential part of my entire life. I am a second generation graduate as well as board member. My three children have graduated from Northwestern and currently my oldest grandson attends. I have previously worked in the business office, volunteered many hours in the Northwestern Elementary, was an instructional assistant in the middle school, co-organized the first two years of the 5K event to benefit the foundation, instructed community education fitness classes for over a dozen years, and most recently have been elected to the position of school board treasurer. It is with much appreciation to have had the honor to serve as a member of the board of directors for the past three years. The Northwestern staff, administration, school board, and community are beyond compare, past, present, and I am certain will be in the future. I feel confident that the best interests for our, the students of our school district will continue to be the focus and that the decisions will also be made to keep our community safe, informed, and valued. Respectfully, me. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Marcy. I, I know this was a, a difficult night for you and difficult last few meetings knowing that uh, you were leading up to this. Um, and I want to thank you personally for taking such an active role in our community. And especially my personal thanks for being part of this board. Because you've always had the best interest of our children in your heart and all the decisions and the opinions that you brought to the, to the discussion here at the board meetings. And not, not only at Northwestern Lehigh, but with all your career in childhood development, you show that love for children and caring in uh, the decisions that you bring and made part of this board. So uh, 
So best wishes in your new community. Carbon County is lucky to, to be, have you be part of them now. And we all know we all know that Northwestern Lee has been a center of your life this far in your life and, and for your parents and your kids and your grandkids and just want to wish Godspeed and, and uh, in your new location and your new endeavors and please stay in touch with us as I, I'm sure you will. But best wishes to you, Marcy, and thank you for all you did for the families and kids here at Northwestern Lehigh. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, I mean, I'll certainly turn it over to other board members, um, but Marcy, you've been a good board member for us and always, you know, Mr. Delker took the words out of my mouth in terms of doing things that are have kids at the focus. And so as a board member, what more could one ask for other than to keep the kids at the focus of decisions? And so um, certainly thank you, we will miss you and um, we will miss your leadership as a school district and as our school community. I do wish you well. Thank you. Marcy, it was a pleasure to serve with you and I wish you the best of luck on your new endeavors. Thank you, John. Hey, Marcy, we go back a long time, right? High school. Um, it was great to, uh, you know, have, have served for this past three years with you on the board. Really appreciated, you know, more so sitting next to you in the boardroom as opposed to sitting here staring at a Zoom screen. Um, but uh, yeah, best of luck. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you, see you out, out and about in the community for sure. Thank you. Marcy, I want to wish you luck. I'm, I'm surprised and saddened, uh, but our loss, I'm sure, is the gain of wherever they're going. Um, I certainly enjoyed teaming up with you for the election three years ago. The one nice rainbow in this is that all those yard signs that are in my garage can finally go someplace else. Make a little more space. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Jim. If you noticed, I did mention the quality education for children. I will still be an advocate no matter where I go. And that was our, our platform. <laughs> Thank there, you. There you go. Yeah, Marcy, good luck to you and, and thanks for everything. Um, communities built about volunteerism and this is a, a very big volunteer position. So thank you for your time and good luck to you. Thank you. Hey, Marcy, it's Alan. Yes, uh, best of the wishes and best luck where, you know, as you move forward, uh, I'll move the candy dish a little closer to myself so I'll be able to have a little more now. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your service. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Yeah, I was really amazed that I know you've been very active in the community, but when you put all the things that you've done with Northwestern in one paragraph, I mean, all of the things that you've done with the community and the foundation and uh, uh, just amazing, the involvement that you've had with our school and, and thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Um, if the board would indulge me, I'd like to propose, um, Marcy's also our treasurer. Um, and so Marcy's resignation, she said is effective September 1. Um, so we would have to take acceptance of her resignation at the September board meeting, first of all. Um, however, we do need to, at September's board meeting, also appoint a treasurer. So I do need you between now and then to think about that. Um, we do have September workshop in between, and that September workshop is September 2nd. And so um, September 2nd would be the workshop meeting that I would propose bringing a plan in order to fill the vacancy, which will be an appointment of a position to fill the remainder of Marcy's term. Um, but we do have to appoint a treasurer. Uh, it's not likely to be the new board member, um, but we do have to appoint a treasurer likely before you appoint a new board member. <clears throat> so I just would like you to think about that because um, Marcy is also on our check signings. And so we will need to do that at September, probably no later. I don't know, Mr. Delk, or how you would like to handle that process. Well, we just went through uh, a month or two ago. Uh, I asked uh, Mr. Hernandez, our vice president, if he would uh, solicit or, or uh, recruit somebody to uh, take that position. And I thought if you would uh, call around uh, before the next meeting and offer up a uh, recommendation for a nomination at the next meeting. I'd appreciate that. Hey, I will certainly do that. Thank you. 
Okay, so on September workshop, I will put an item on about um, how what the process will look like to replace that, you know, certainly working with Mrs. Moyer, Attorney Moyer, um, you know, there's certain laws and procedures as well as then I will also put a treasurer motion or treasurer discussion that then we can take to September board meeting to accept Marcy's resignation in September and then to appoint a treasurer and then begin the process um, to find a board member to fulfill Marcy's term. Um, as I said, Marcy, it, um, it certainly is a pleasure to serve with you and, and all of the um, you know, good positive things that you bring in terms of your focus on kids. And so good luck to you. Yes, I think there are pretty specific timing uh, requirements in the uh, school code and our own in our own policies that uh, Attorney Moria will uh, help us uh, to uh, work through to make sure that we meet all those deadlines for the new appointment. Thanks again, Marcy, and we'll move on to the next item in our agenda, and that would be. Uh, courtesy of the floor on the communications, courtesy of the floor to um, anyone who is in the audience who would like to address the board, please uh, raise your hand so Dr. Sosnovi can uh, cue you in and uh, address the board beginning with your name and address, please. I am seeing none at this time. Well, hold on one second, I do see one. Mrs. Baker, you have the floor. Hi, thanks again. And uh, I have a lot of random comments um, from the meeting today. So uh, again, I'm Michelle Baker, 3024, Silver Creek Court, Kutztown, PA. Um, so to start, I appreciate the challenges the admin has faced, You know, especially with the ever-changing guidelines. I in no way <laughs> envy your work here, um, but that said, these are government recommendations. They're not mandates or laws. Even Wolf said the districts don't have to follow. Um, you know, and I agree with Mr. Deliker that Northwestern was lumped into Lehigh County. Um, whether that's good or bad, I'm not sure, but you know, Allentown and the nursing homes really, I think, upped our, our numbers. Um, I do look forward to planning for a traditional school day in October, quarter two. I'm also shocked that the school board wasn't consultant, consulted in the uh, decision to go hybrid. Um, you know, based on the third survey, which I didn't fill out because I wanted my kids to go traditional, it appears that 75% of the families still want a traditional in-school day. Um, so, you know, we went with what the governor said, not with what the parents wanted. Um, you know, also when when kids are not in school, they're in daycare. Uh, you know, and other Catholic private schools are are going five days in person, so other schools can do it. Um, you know, concern over the possible legal repercussions. Um, with a decision for hybrid, that uh, Jessica Moyer said it's. Uh, based on schools requiring students to be in school, but we're not requiring that. Uh, Northwestern is offering online options for those who who need it or prefer it. Um, you know, another subject re regarding the shutdown of sports. Wolf was asked, Governor Wolf was asked via right to know request to produce the data uh, to support why he shut down sports. And the response from the uh, government was the records don't exist. You know, <laughs> we need to keep kids in sports. We need to keep them healthy. They need to get out and exercise. Um, yeah, and then again, I think the social aspect of school is very important. The benefits of being in school outweigh the risks. Um, and I just had one final comment on the bus stops. I'm hoping that no student is on a bus route longer than one hour. Um, so again, I appreciate your time. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mrs. Baker. Um, one clarification I'd like to make uh, based on your comment is that uh, uh, there was no decision to open schools 
full time in October uh, this evening. It was just part of the discussion as a what if, and uh, we still are at this point under the uh, approved plan to op to uh, stay hybrid until the end of the marking period. But we will monitor the data going forward to see if there's anything we can do differently. And uh, thank you for your comments. Is there anybody else, Dr. Sisnelby? I am not seeing any, Mr. Delacroix. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for uh, attending. Uh, moving on to um, communications. Are there any notes uh, from the uh, secretary, Mr. Cassiano? Mr. Cassiano, are there any uh, notes from the secretary, communications? Well, hearing none, I'll uh, introduce to you something I just got via email today. And this is a letter from Circle of Seasons. And it is uh, addressed to me as the board president from the uh, president of the board of trustees at Circle of Seasons, uh, Kimberly Hyman. And uh, the letter reads, as the board president of Circle of Seasons Charter School, I'm notifying you that the Circle of Seasons seeks renewal of its charter with Northwestern Lehigh School District. They are entering into the last year of their charter and according to our policy 140, uh, we will conduct a comprehensive review of the charter. The charter school has prepared and submitted its annual report yearly, as well as providing a number of direct reports to the district in accordance with the charter agreement. And they're asking that we please advise what additional information the district requires for its renewal review and Circle of Seasons will provide that information promptly. We look forward to working with you during the charter renewal process. So we, uh, we will begin this uh, renewal. Uh, Mrs. Holman, is there anything uh, of concern or anything that we should know moving forward. I don't know what the, uh, the timing is for this, but this is just another thing on our plate and your plate to uh, make sure that uh, the charter is being followed. Yes, I actually sent a memo um, to Miss Attorney Moyer today. They helped us last time through. If you require, there was a review of data and a hearing at that time on um, what the process is for the charter renewal. If you recall, Circle of Seasons was a three-year initial charter, a five-year renewal, and this is their um, renewal um, moving forward. And so we will get back to you with the timing. It, it, we just arrived this afternoon via email to Mr. Deliker and CC to me. Um, thought we would let the board know that it that it came today so that we will start the process now of reviewing the data, which as you remember last was a comprehensive approach looking at their um, information and their goals, as well as all the data they put in their charter and whether or not they met their goals, as well as any information they submit in curriculum. And there was a large involvement from Mrs. Stitzel the last round um, in terms of their curriculum meeting Pennsylvania standards, as well as um, textbooks and, and technology involved. Um, so we will get back to you with what the process is going to look like. The time frame we need to follow is also prescribed um, in the law and um, we'll tell you what the next steps are. Mr. Delker, you're muted, I believe, if you're talking. Yes, I was, and I'm sorry. Um, any questions about the Circle of Seasons renewal before we move on? Not at this point. So let's move into uh, administrative and building sharing. Uh, and Dr. Sosnovic, will you please run through the administrators who are present? On mute. Excuse me. I did the same thing. Uh, absolutely. So we're going to start with Mr. DeVico. Good 
Good evening, everybody. Uh, just would like to say one thing. Um, this summer's been a real challenge, obviously, for everybody. But I just want to acknowledge um, the office staff, the custodians, and the maintenance uh, department who have worked tirelessly this summer to, one, get the building ready with new challenges that we typically don't face, uh, but also then with um, every, every week or every two weeks where we have new challenges put forth that we have to adjust to. Otherwise, uh, that's all I have to say tonight. Thank you. Mrs. Pulley. Uh, just to echo what uh, Mr. DeVico said, um, you know, it's truly been a team effort and uh, I'm thankful to have such wonderful people to work alongside in all of this. Um, and best wishes to Marcy and thank you very much for your service to our students and our schools. Thank you. Uh, just best wishes to Marcy and thank you for your service. Chief. Uh, I'll concur with uh, everyone else. Best wishes to Marcy. Also, a little bit of good news to close out. We were awarded a $20,000 grant through the PA LCB grant. It's basically going to be about 90% of educational materials, including a driving simulator, some uh, some fatal vision goggles, which will be able to run the, just the kids through some, some drills. So it's going to be a lot of educational uh, Based things that we can teach them on the dangers of drinking and driving. So I look forward to receiving all that and moving forward over the next two years. Thank you. Mrs. Burlack. Thank you for your service, Marcy. And um, I echo what Bill said. Everyone helping us get ready for the school year. Mr. Zimmerman. Marcy, thank you for your service and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. Mr. Oaks. Marcy, thanks, thanks for your service. Um, hopefully you uh, have good uh, future endeavors with everything you do. And to the other administrators, thank you for uh, working together with everybody and, and getting through this this summer. Um, I will let my staff know as well for all their hard work. Thanks again. Mrs. Edmonds. A few things, just like to welcome Amber Schrenko aboard as one of the Northwestern Lehigh special ed teachers. Uh, we look forward to working with Amber. I'd also like to wish Mr. Allen congratulations. Remember meeting Don while being an assistant principal at Emmaus High School. This is about 10 years back. He was still at Northern Lehigh, I think at that time. And um, his comedy and collegiality was really much appreciated by all the Lehigh Valley APs. Um, he's a little bit of a legend uh, among that group, I believe. I'll miss working with Don, and I sincerely wish him all the best in retirement. And Marcy, uh, best wishes to you, and thank you so much for your service. This is Yadish. Marcy, thank you. It has been a pleasure working with you, certainly uh, on the board, but also as a parent, uh, certainly enjoyed having your, your boys in the building uh, and your daughter as well. Um, and I certainly echo what all the other administrators have, have said. Uh, I certainly wanna thank the other building principals and, and uh, administrators uh, for all of their support throughout all of this. So thank you. Mrs. Matika. Um, Marcy, best wishes. Uh, you brought a unique experience to the board as a former employee holding two different positions uh, that was unique as a board member. And I always appreciated your views as a, from an employee point of view and the support of our employees. Um, I valued that, so thank you. Um, best wishes to you. Please stop by and visit. Um, we will miss you. I think it brings that to me, so I too want to express my sincerest gratitude to all of our administrators and staff for an outstanding job getting school ready this year in very turbulent times, as I described. I'm extremely proud of all of you. I can't wait to see our students in person and online, as well as our educational staff and support staff coming back next week. Marcy, thank you for everything you've done for our students and community. You'll be sorely missed, and remember, you're always welcome here back home 
where you're going is not your home. That is a temporary stay until you come back to our community. So you're welcome here anytime. We're gonna miss you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Uh, Holman, you have the final word. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, I only have one point of clarification. Um, it's actually in response to Mrs. Baker, who I think is actually still on. I believe when I responded to you today, I told you this, but just certainly for the point of the record and point for our board, as you recall, when we approved the health and safety plan, we do look at local data. And so we did look at our local zip code data and run it through the same metric when this came out and we run it regularly. And so that will continue to be one of the data points that we look at. Um, our local zip code data doesn't comprise all of Northwestern Lee High School District, certainly, because it is not run by the district, it's run by zip code. Um, but even running local zip code data, we didn't meet the metrics for traditional model. And so as you know, Mr. Zimmerman, I think used the word, we looked at every possible option um, in terms of athletics, we looked at every possible option in terms of academics as well. And, um, and, and that was one of them as well. And we'll, we will continue to look at. Um, also echoing um, Dr. Sosnovic's comments, you know, our administrative team, I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting started working in June, um, working towards a, a traditional model has very quickly pivoted um, to blended and we can't wait to see all of our students, whether they're online or they're here um, back with us very soon, as well as our staff who were to, will return to us um, next week. And so it won't look like a traditional opening with breakfast and, and um, everyone in the same place, um, but we will be back together nonetheless. And so thank you, Marcy, again for your service and I hope you all have a great night. Okay, thank you. And uh, moving to the board, uh, Mr. Hernandez, we'll begin with you tonight. Okay, thank you. I just like the best wishes to the retirees and Marcy again, thank you. Uh, and good luck to you in the, the next step there. And I'd like to wish the administration and staff uh, good luck as you start the uh, the new year. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rex. Yes, uh, same as Todd, uh, congratulations to all the, to the uh, retirees. Uh, it's good to see such a, a large amount of people that served diligently in the interest of the community. And also thanks to the current administration for all the work. I'm, I'm sure you feel thousands of questions and a whole lot of, uh, you know, shots over the bow. So just uh, keep your chin up and we'll all make it through. Thank you. And congratulations, Marcy, one last time. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to skip over you, Marcy, and go to Mrs. Sheffer. Sure. I just want to, to uh, say to Marcy, I'm sure that you will do great things in your new community and you will um, be uh, loved as much as you were in your Northwestern Tiger community. So good luck to you. Um, the other comment I wanted to make um, out to Art, if you could just relay to the grounds folks too, who, who are working super hard on the outsides of the building. I know a lot of us drive by often and, and don't ever really give a shout out. Um, the, the grounds look really good, Art. So if you could pass that along, um, it's really nice when we drive by to be um, proud to to have that as our school. And uh, if you could just relay that to them, that would be great. Thank you, I will. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Mr. Leiser. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you know, echoing some of what's been said already, but I just wanna reinforce, you know, how fortunate um, and proud I am of, of the administration and staff that we have uh, and, and the efforts they've gone to, to, uh, you know, to support our community through this, uh, you know, through this difficult time. Um, you know, any of the kind of challenge points that I present are, you know, coming at it, you know, from my seat uh, and not at all questioning, you know, the difficulty of the, of the position that the district's been put in here. So I just want to make sure I echo that. Uh, and I know Bill had, Bill had said the same. Um, you know, Luann, good luck. I know recruiting is probably going to be tough uh, during this period. So I'm thinking about you as you've got um, some, some big uh, shoes to fill on the retirement side. Uh, and I'm sure on the, on the substitute teaching side and the, and the regular staff teaching, uh, I think is going to be a, a difficult season for you. So uh, thinking about you through this, through this period. Um, Thank you. And then, uh, you know, I just do, I do want to close again, and, you know, as a data guy, uh, you guys hear me say this all the time, but just want to share a couple stats um, that, you know, again, coming back to some of the comments from the community tonight, um, I looked at six months of cases, um, flu cases from last year, so the six month period from September through 
uh, March of last year, there were 129,912 uh, positive flu cases in the state of Pennsylvania. During the last five months, we've had 122,605. So it is one month shorter of that sedate I had access to easily this evening, but we've had 7,000 less cases of COVID um, during this period. Um, at its peak during, um, during, this, during this period, actually, last year, the positive incident of the flu was 35% of tests. Um, we're at 8% of tests right now. We're testing a whole lot more uh, for sure right now. Lehigh County flu cases um, during that six month period last year were 4,794. We're at 5,025, so slightly higher. But uh, in my opinion, again, I think I, I, I'm questioning as Jen pointed out, right? The local statistics don't pass the benchmarks. My position has been questioning the benchmarks um, that I think they're not set correctly. And there's actually very few counties in the entire state that qualify based on these benchmarks or guidelines, Potter County, Tioga County, some of the most rural districts are the only counties that are even falling below that, that threshold. So uh, again, best luck, 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 Mark, Marcy. Um, and uh, I know you'll do great wherever you go. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Dr. Warfel. You're muted, Doc. I am. Okay. There I am. Uh, best wishes to the administration and the staff in the very challenging weeks that lie ahead. I certainly have no doubt in my mind that they will make it the best and most successful experience for our students as they can. They have the competence and the, the, the ability to do, to do good things in a bad situation. So good luck to all of you. Thank you, Doc. Uh, Mr. Cassiano, you still with us? John Cassiano? Okay, uh, maybe he'll come on later. Let's move to Attorney Moyer. Is there anything you'd like to uh, offer up? Just like to wish Marcy well. Thank you. And um, Marcy, saved you for last. Is there anything you, further you'd like to add? Um, just to pretty much say what everyone else has is in regards to the upcoming school year, um, it's gonna be different <laughs> no matter how you look at it. I wish you all the best. Thank you to the administration and staff for all the planning. Um, like I said, I have a grandson that will be attending and he's very excited about it. He was looking forward as everyone else to five days, but he's just as excited to keep back to two and uh, three virtual. So I'm excited for him. And um, I could probably go on and on, but I won't. Um, Northwestern is home and family. Thank you all. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you, Marcy. Thanks a lot. And uh, I just want to reiterate how blessed our community is to have such a, a dedicated staff and, and board to, uh, to move us through all these issues that we face daily. Thank you to all of you. And best of luck, Marcy. Um, Last item on the agenda are the meeting announcements. So we have a workshop scheduled for September 2nd and a regular board meeting for September 16th. And uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion Rex. Motion by Mr. Rex. Second, Mrs. Scheffler. Second by Mrs. Scheffler, meeting adjourned. Thank you everybody for uh, attending this evening. Good night.